extrinsic motivations and distractions run most people because they don't give themselves permission to go after what their real mission is. Most people in their daily life, at least once every week or two or three, will have a feeling of overwhelm and a feeling of distraction and just feeling like the external world is dominating and you need to sort through all the stuff that's being bombarding you. <clears throat> and you're sometimes distracted by all that. And you believe possibly that you have to do it all. And all has to be done now. And I know I certainly had a few of those moments in my journey. And about 40 years ago, 41 years ago, I was asking myself, how do I deal with that? I was just newly in practice and I felt like I was having way too much happening and had to prioritize things and had to organize things and to deal with the distractions. So I'd like to give you some tools, some practical things that you can do in addition to some principles that will help you stay focused and, and geared towards uh, the greatest fulfillment. So when I was in practice 41 years ago or so, I noticed that sometimes I would just be completely overwhelmed. It seemed like I could just back off and I'd want to just take it one at a time. And so I got out a piece of paper and I wrote down every single thing that was on my mind. I have now since then formalized it and put that into one of my training programs. But at the time, I just took a piece of paper out and wrote everything that was on my mind. And there was a lot way more than really needed to be there, but I just was carrying stuff in my mind. Anything that was vying attention and taking up space and time in my mind, I wrote it down. And this was personal or professional. I just wrote it all down. <clears throat> a short pencil is better than a long memory. Once I got that down on paper, that already in itself was useful because I didn't have to carry it around in my mind. I had some place to put it. There's a very important principle here that Anything you don't have on paper will have to be stored in the mind. And some of those things for days, weeks, or months, or even longer into the future. And so instead of being present, you're distracting yourself with all this stuff that's just way off into the future. Or guilts of the past. Or fears of the future. So I wrote it all down, and that calmed a little bit of my distraction down. But then I realized there's a lot on my plate. And I was feeling I had to do all that and some of it felt urgent now so I decided next to that list I wrote another little list is this really important to do or is this something I can dump and forget about and not even put energy into it now I only found that about every 50 to 100 things that I listed was a dumper but I'd rather dump it and just say, you know what? There's absolutely nothing I need to be focused on. That's silly that I'm carrying it around my head. And I dump it. And I formally let go of it. Because I don't have to do anything about it. But it was sitting around, rumbling around in my head, in my mind, in my head, uh, as long as it was just not addressed. Then on the next column, I wrote these series of columns. On the next column, I wrote down, who could I delegate this to? Who could I delegate this to? Is there anything on this list that could be delegated to somebody else? And if so, who? And in the process of doing that, I realized that some of these things on my mind were projects. So I decided to take those projects and break them down into the action steps that could be done daily so I could break them into smaller bites. And then I created a delegation sheet. A delegation sheet is something I could write down with another name on it and so it can explain what I need done and the date. And I did them by dates. So if I had something that needed to be done on Tuesday, I'd put all the Tuesdays together, all the Wednesdays together, etc. And when I wrote out who I was going to delegate it to and all the things that need to be delegated, already that was a huge load off my back. Because I realized I was carrying around stuff that really needed to be handed over to specialists that could do things that I wasn't really equipped to do or inspired to do. 
it wasn't highest on my priority. <clears throat> but I was carrying it around because I knew there's a project that needed to be done. I needed to get rid of it off my, off my mind. And that's why if you don't have some place to put things and sort them through, it stays in your head and scatters you, distracts you. So once I put them down on the dates, exactly who I was going to delegate it to, the day it was to be done, and I broke it down into small bites so it was a project to be done that day, so it's not delegating a project to take weeks. I broke it down and kind of into little bites. So I had the date set up to be done. I then had whatever was left, dump, delegate. The next one was to do. What am I going to do? Well, I found out that there was way more delegations than I initially thought that I could give to somebody else to do. And the ones that I needed to do, I wrote down what needed to be done and the appropriate dates. And I made sure they didn't overwhelm myself on those dates. And then I kept a stack of those dates of when I was to do it, what I was going to do in advance. And I kept those chronologically into the future for the next 30 days or so. I had the delegations also into the future for the next 30 days for each of the individuals I was going to delegate to. As I was doing this, my mind was calming down because I realized that I'm carrying around 90 things in my mind today. And really, most of these are done into the days, into the weeks of the future. But I'm carrying it around today, worrying about it, anxious about it. Once I put it on to-do sheets for myself and to delegation sheets to the people I was going to delegate it to, I then at the very last one put in the actual dates on their forms and my forms. They make sure that the dates were accurate and I didn't overwhelm them or overwhelm me. And when I got through, I took the distraction, DI, I had dump for something that was not important. I had delegate, DE, I had do, DO, and I had date, DA. I had the DVAL system that I created. And I created a formula system for how to handle distractions. And for 41 years, I've been using that, and it's still useful today. And I still like the hard copy version, not the, just the computer version. But anything that's not put into appropriate time and date will be stored in the mind and distract you and feel overwhelmed by. So those are simple things. I call it the distraction resolution process. And um, I put that out there, and it's... It's available. I put it into some of my books. I put it in my larger programs, seminar programs on how to be more effective and efficient in business. <clears throat> but you can start applying that immediately. That will help. But the question you need to ask now, when I look at all of those distractions that need to be done or delegated, I found out that a lot of those were things that I had emotions about. And then I found out that there were things that were easily delegated, easily done, not a lot of emotion, but then there were other things that were emotional. And they weren't little action steps I could do. They were things that I had to process in my head. Let's say I had somebody that had, didn't pay their bill, and I'm now distracted by the emotion that they didn't pay the bill, and I'm resenting it. Or somebody has now asked me to go somewhere, and I haven't made my decision whether I want to go, and it's a bit not the right time, but I'm afraid to say no to them because I don't want to upset them. And I'm distracted by an emotion of some infatuation. I don't want to be, don't want to fear the law. I had the fear of loss of that individual in my life. So I didn't want to say no to him, but I'm running around that rummaging in my head. So I found that there were practical things that I need to delegate and do that were use the distraction resolution process, but there were also emotional things that I need to address that weren't just a simple thing to do but required more of a processing, a mental processing, which is where the Demartini method came in. And I found out that, that, you know, a percentage of the things that were vying for my attention in my mind that were distracting me, that I could easily hand over to delegation to do, no problem. Those are pretty easy to do. You can do that and you can take off a huge load off your back. But I found that many of them were emotional distractions. Not just activity distractions, but emotional distractions. And that's where I want to share with you something that's powerful to do. <clears throat> See, everybody has a set of priorities in life, a set of values in life. And anything that supports your perception of those values, you label positive or good, you open up to it, 
you're attracted to it, you have an impulse towards it, it represents prey, you want to consume it and use up time for it. Anything that challenges your values, you tend to have an instinct to avoid, it challenges you, you can label it bad, it's negative to you, and you want to avoid it and not have to be distracted time-wise by it. So you're filtering your reality through your value system, your perceptions are based on that, and anything that you perceive as supportive or challenging can be, in a sense, distracting, particularly the more extreme it is. The more extreme infatuation, we've all been highly infatuated with somebody somewhere in our life, and it's hard to get them out of our mind. They're preoccupying our mind, because anything we infatuate with it, we're conscious of the upsides of and unconscious of the downsides of, will vie for attention, occupy space and time, and run our life. And the same things we resent. We've all been resentful, really angry at somebody, and it's hard to sleep at night. You're distracted. You can't go to bed because you've got this in your mind. Anything that you resent distracts you and takes up space and time in your mind. Anything that you have an imbalanced perception of, infatuation, where you put more positives and negatives or neg or resentful, anything you have more negatives and positives on, will distract your mind as an emotion and occupy space and time in your mind and run your mind. So when you're making that list of distractions, some of those are not just things you delegate and do. They're things that are running around and, you know, distracting your mind inside. They're emotional. If you don't balance out the perceptions, they're going to keep buying for attention. They're going to keep occupying your mind. So I found that out 41 years ago, too. And I has already started to develop some remnants of what I've developed now called the Demartini Method. But I found out that anything that was really resenting, if I didn't find the upsides to it, the benefits of it, and I didn't find out where I had done that in my own life, where I would be less likely to judge somebody, I found that that lingered longer. And sometimes those lingered for long periods of time stored in my subconscious mind. And then anything reminded me, I would bring up this emotional and rage again, this upsetness again. So I realized that if I didn't address those issues and I let them accumulate, they're going to sit inside me and create illness because they're basically distracting your mind. A lot of the biochemical imbalances that the pharmaceutical companies want you to believe are the source of your illnesses, psychological or physiological, are there. There's imbalances, but it's not because there's a lack of drugs or it's not just because it just randomly went out of place. It's because you're storing those in your subconscious mind and they're affecting your neurophysiology neurophysi and chemistry. So I realized that if I didn't address things on a daily basis and I let things accumulate, it was going to build up on me. And then I'm going to have these kind of subconsciously stored distractions that I'm not even knowing what to do with. So if you don't sort through them and itemize them out and take them one at a time and methodically dissolve them away, they can run your life. And then anything that reminds you of those experiences in the past that are stored there can trigger it and create an anxiety response, an anxiety of the fear of loss of that which you seek or the fear of gain of that which you're trying to avoid. So you're having an anxiety about this stuff that's vying for attention in your mind. It's occupying space and time in it, and it's running your life. And without a doubt, a short pencil has been in a long memory when it comes to taking those actions that you can immediately act or delegate or do. But sometimes the delegation is not easy on these. These are things you have to do by addressing them, by changing your perception. So one is changing actions. The distraction resolution is for changing actions and delegating and doing actions that are prioritized. The other is prioritizing and transforming your perceptions. You have control over perception, decisions, and actions. And knowing which one to do, perceptions or actions, is important. So what I do is I go in there and I, let's say I'm resentful about something that somebody didn't pay their bill and they're trying to, you know, play a game on you, which has happened occasionally throughout my career. And uh, I go, well, wait a minute now, I've delivered the service and by God, they deserve to pay for it. And uh, so I will be upset about that sometimes and react to that. And then I stop and I go, okay, go to a moment where and when I perceive myself displaying or demonstrating that behavior. And what's the benefit to me that they've done that? First, I define what they did. You know, they are received a service and are now delaying payment, refusing to pay or trying to defer pay or avoid paying or something. So I go and look at that and I go, identify what specifically have they demonstrated that I dislike and despise most. Then go to a moment where and when I've displayed and described, described that and done that in my own life. 
because I find out that what I'm pointing my finger at at other people that I'm judging is a reflection of something I've done in my life, and that's I'm feeling ashamed about it, and that's why I'm judging them for it. And then I go and find out how it serves me, and maybe that's making sure that I get a deposit up front or get full payments before we begin the pro presentation or whatever the service is, making sure that I value myself more. And I look at all the benefits of it until I'm actually in a gratitude attitude for them for their lesson that they've given me. And when I do it, I'm less reactive and I can then write a more formal, objective letter to them saying somehow there's been an insight, an oversight about the payments. Um, if for some reason that you have a dispute about the payments, please let me know what the dispute is, if, if not. And then I can objectively handle that without an emotional reaction and retaliation. So now, once I've neutralized that with the Demartini method in a series of questions, I've taken myself from my emotional, reactive, amygdala-based, distractive, subconsciously, subjectively biased state to now in a more objective, more rational, more reasonable, more loving, more uh, understanding state. One is what they call systems one thinking, where you emotionally react before you think, and the other is systems two thinking, where you now have a balanced orientation and you're now thinking before you react. By doing the Demartini method that I teach in the Breakthrough Experience Seminar, you can actually learn how to do that when you are in any way distracted by emotions. If you're distracted by actions, you prioritize them and do the distraction resolution form. If you're distracted by emotions, which sometimes are more powerful than even the, the distractions by actions, then you pull out the Demartini method or come to the Breakthrough Experience and learn how to do that. So you've got that tool so you're not reacting, you're proacting. In the process of doing that, you find out that all of a sudden, this distraction that's on your life is sorted. Now, there's other things you can do to take care of distractions. Let's say things come across your desk and, uh, you know, you maybe you have a bunch of, uh, we used to use file folders in the early 70s, and eight, early, early 80s, late 70s, file folders. I had one for each day of the month and I had one for each month of the year. And anything that came in there, I put it in appropriate file for the day or the month. And that way I wasn't having everything on my desk today. I had it sorted between the distraction resolution form and the file categorization systems. I, I didn't get distracted when I used those. And then when I had the Demartini method, as I developed that, I had all the emotional distractions a solution. And once I did one, the distraction resolution and the filing system, and once I did the other, my mind was clear and present, and poised, and productive, and prioritized, and purposeful, and patient. And I wasn't distracted so much by the outside world. See, if you don't say no, now, by the way, you're gonna also going to have people around you, all different sorts of people, all with their values, projecting their values onto you. And they're going to basically want you to do things that help them fulfill their values. And some are going to be pertinent to you, and some are going to be less pertinent. And you, if you're afraid of losing them as a friend, you're, you're going to basically say yes to a lot of them because you haven't had the courage to say thank you, but no thank you. Right now, I've got other priorities, and I don't want to give you a halfway job. I want to make sure I give you my all if I'm there, and I'm not able to because I'm really right now with a lot of deadlines. If you don't know how to say tactfully thank you, but no thank you, um, then you're going to be distracted unnecessarily. So learning how to say no, let me look at my priorities. Let me see where it fits. If I feel it can fit, I will tell you yes. If I feel it's not, uh, I'll say no. I will get back to you if it's, if it's a yes. I will not get back to you if it's a no. Just make a simple process there so you know how to handle the people that are trying to get attention, opportunists and people that are distracting without. They're not necessarily trying to be distracted. They're just trying to fulfill their values, and they're projecting those values onto you and not necessarily considering your needs and values at the time. Out of respect, you might, when you realize that people are doing that, you might consider that also backwards to other people. You know, make sure it's something that's not distracting and projecting onto them. But at the same time, if you have the ability to say thank you but no thank you and prioritize it, you have the ability to, dis to dissolve distractions by the process I gave you, the distraction resolution. You also have the filing system to make sure that nothing piles up on you. It's all set up for the days and weeks so you're not thinking of all this stuff in the month ahead today, and you know how to do the Demartini method and transforming the amygdala's responses and emotional responses of impulses and instincts, systems one thinking, to systems two thinking where you're objective and centered and balanced and poised, that's the key. 
that is the, the reason why in the Breakthrough Experience, which is one of my signature programs that you probably heard me mention, that's one of the reasons why I emphasize those tools in the program to give people the power to not live distracted by the external world, but to let them focused and inspired from within. You know, I said on the movie The Secret 16, 17 years ago that the voice, when the voice and the vision on the inside is louder than all opinions on the outside, you begin to master your life. Well, that's so true. But you can't get that voice and vision on the inside to come loud enough as long as you're letting the other stuff distract you. So all these tools that I'm giving you is about how to break through those distractions and integrate them. But the number one one, the one that's most difficult is the emotional one. And that's why I teach people the breakthrough experience and the Demartini method, because it's easy to sort through on a piece of paper your distractions and to-do list. That's, that's fa very fast. You can do that in 30 minutes and it's done. And you're, all that stuff's off your plate. But all the emotional ones, all the things that you've stored up in your subconscious mind that you're infatuated or resentful, if you don't have a process for that, that can distract you from your greatest productivity and keep you from being focused. And people, one of the most common things in the 1980s when I ask people, uh, questions in live seminars, when I tell them to write your questions down and send them in, the number one question I got in the 1980s was, how do I stay focused? I keep getting distracted. And I'm absolutely certain that one of the main reasons why people are not focused and they're distracted is because they've got stored in their subconscious mind a bunch of emotional baggage. All the resentments, all the infatuations, all the nightmares, all the fantasies, all the avoidances of instinct and all the seekings of impulses, that are vying for attention in their mind, they're running their mind, that's sitting there. And that's why you do the Demartini method to ask questions to equilibrate the mind and bring it back into poise and presence. That's why in the Breakthrough Experience, I teach that method very clearly because people who can stay focused on what's highest in their priority and really get focused on what their mission is are less likely to get distracted. When you have a very busy day doing high priority things, it's easy to say no to people that are trying to get your attention. It's easy to say, well, I'm really busy. I've got a high priority day today. But if you don't have anything on your plate and you're letting the world around you, around you, run you, it's easy to get vulnerable to that and let people take up your attention. You know, if you don't fill your day with high priority actions, your day fills up with low priority distractions. And if you don't know how to dissolve those distractions with the Demartini method, which I teach in the Breakthrough Experience, and don't know how to focus it, which is also something I teach in the Breakthrough Experience on how to live by priorities and prioritize your daily life and delegate to lower priority things and deal with distractions. If you're not certain about that, come to the Breakthrough Experience. I can show you exactly what to do. Methodically, every single action steps on how to dissolve all that. It is really not that difficult on the, the, the delegations to do's, but learning the art of dissolving the emotional baggage that's stored in the subconscious mind and all the compounding anxieties that are coming there, that is a mastery that I'm going to show you how to do in that program. And I want you to learn how to do it because it is a huge load off your back when you've mastered that skill. You know, we have the capacity to transform anything that's been in our way to on the way by asking new questions. So by delegating lower priority things and doing things by priority and taking command of that and putting things in order and bringing order to your mind using the Demartini method from the breakthrough experience, you can live a focused and very productive and inspired life. There's absolutely no reason why we have to let the external world run us. Extrinsic motivations and distractions run most people because they don't give themselves permission to go after what their real mission is. They've never taken the time to prioritize their life. They've never given themselves identity of what's really priority and what's really a value in their life that's most important. And they haven't learned the Demartini method on how to distract the emotions that distract them from being that present state. So come to the Breakthrough Experience. Learn how to do that particular method Learn how to also at the Breakthrough Experience, how to identify what's really priority, what really your values are, how to organize and prioritize your life, how to delegate, things like that, and how to use these tools so you can do something more extraordinary with your life. Give yourself permission to shine, not shrink, to radiate, not gravitate, to focus, not distract, and to inspire, not despire your life. That's why I want you to come to the Breakthrough Experience so I can share over 26 hours of education with you and practical tools where you actually learn the, the tools how to do that so you can master your life. We all want to master our life and do something and make a bigger difference. And this is one more step on how to do that. So I want to thank you for joining me for this, this little presentation day, this weekly presentation on, on basically how to, how to uh, you know, focused 
strategies on how to get, you know, dissolve distractions in your life and not your distracted mind and how to be your, yourself, your authentic self. So take advantage of this little, this video, definitely come into the breakthrough experience because at the breakthrough experience, I can show you exactly how to do it. It's not just theory. It's practically done. You do it. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Join me at the breakthrough experience. And thank you for joining me today.